Okay, so I've installed the extra filter capacitor way up here. After installing it, I'm thinking, wow, I've done this close to all these audio circuits. But hopefully that won't matter. Let's just double check. The negative side is onto this grounded terminal. Yep, and the positive side is onto where the red wire is coming from the power supply. Excellent. Will this guy hum? Now, the thing about this is from time to time, this amp has not hummed at all. I don't really know why. It could be uh, during various tests, I'm kind of occluding the output from the amp so you can't hear the hum anymore. I don't know. Sometimes it seems to be humming in one channel and not humming in the other. How can that be with a power supply hum? Let's see what happens. Let, not with the mouse though. <laughs> I keep trying to turn stuff on with the mouse. Okay, we're going to keep an eye on a couple things. Let's see, I've got the scope running and dim bulbs first. In case I boomed up big time with that capacitor. Nope, everything looks good. Just let it warm up. Just watching those bulbs, dim bulbs. Okay, here they come. Here's the amp. Well, it has input hum. I have to put those capacitors back in. Uh, huh. Son of a gun. So we can't be sure about the hum without those capacitors in there or... Well, that's what I gotta do. Let, let's look for the oscillation though. This is what I wanted to, to check for. Now, you see that the speakers are plugged in, not, they're not plugged into the general output ones where they were all this time. They are in the, which ones are they in? They're actually in the base connection. This is where the base speakers go. Okay, man, here comes the proof. Are you oscillating? No. No oscillation. Now, if you're looking at the scope in the camera, you're only seeing half the line. It's a shutter effect again of the camera. I put this on full. That might change things a little bit on the camera too. No, I know what will. There. Okay, now you can see the whole line. So here we go. Is there an oscillation on the plates? this channel. There's a hum. There's a hum there. The other channel, plate, same hum. And of course, same thing there, but no oscillation. Only because I moved the speaker plugs. So I'm going to have to re reinstall the shorting capacitors up here before we know for sure that uh, there's uh, that, that there's no hum left in it. I, I think it is humming. Here I am trying to work stuff again with the mouse. Okay, I'll put in those capacitors. We'll see what happens. Kill the inputs. Okay, I've reinstalled the uh, two shorting capacitors right here. Let's see about that hum. I think it's still going to be there. Okay, dim bulbs again all as well. I think it's going to sound exactly the same. Well, it can't. No, it won't sound exactly the same. Let's see. Let's hear. Well, there it is. Well, how much hum is that? <laughs> I mean, it's definitely there. You can certainly hear it. And I remember the microphone you're listening to is just a, just right here in front of the speaker. So any little hum, you're going to hear it. How bad would this be in the console? Did this really make a difference? You know, I, I, I can't even say for sure. I think it did. I soldered it in. Uh, I can't disconnect it easily. 
Uh, is it both channels? Let, let's let's check that out. No difference. Wow. Th so this is why my head hurts so much. Hum in one channel. Hum in this channel only. Well, residual hum like that. This could be from a tube. Here we go. Is this hum worth beating out of this thing? Can't know for sure how this would sound in the console itself. Probably sound exactly like this though. Move the tubes around, see if the hum travels with it. You could do that fairly easily. Let's verify again where the hum is. Definitely this channel. That's kind of curious, isn't it? How can you have one channel with no hum? Are both channels working? That's just. Now they're, they're silenced with capacitors, so I don't know if this even come through. It does. I'm adding a little more hum. Left channel, right channel. Get that right. So this channel's that speaker. So the one that's humming. This one. Careful on your fingers there, Tim. So this one's humming. If it's a tube, it's one of these three tubes that's introducing the hum. Are all the tubes the same temperature again? Let me try that one more time. You had such interesting results from doing that, but then very inconsistent results. So just looking on my own here, uh, right, okay, moving these things around too much, I just can't do it on these funny angles, I'll spin it right around. right up close last time it worked well. So can you see? One, two, three tubes, but the one furthest on the right is cool. That's this one here. Measures cool. So this is, again, it's absolutely consistent that every time I do this, whatever tube is plugged into that socket runs cool. No oscillations. That's just the strangest thing you could ever imagine. So look, let's, let's just get a real good look at this, because this is so weird. I don't have any explanation for it at all at this point. It's, it's, I mean, it's pretty hard to, 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 to think this isn't really showing the truth. I'm changing different angles here. And it consistently shows, no matter what I do, it shows this tube as being cooler. He's only doing half his job too. He's got a whole receiver to power. He's only doing half the job. So already a little warm. Let's go, let's go this way. Let's go this way. In case you're wondering what, what these are, these are antenna. I'm sorry, these are uh, outputs for 6.3 volts to run pilot lights. 
Can't imagine they're involved in all this craziness. Okay, the two uh, cathode resistors here for comparison. Let me try this again up close. Sooner or later I'll figure out how to do this well on camera. So, I mean, you can see some of the wiring in here and everything. I need a pointer. You can kind of see my hand moving in there a little bit. That's one right where the white plus is. Oh, it doesn't look nearly as good on what you're seeing. Eighty-three. So this is reading eighty-three. You read it down here. You watch for the red dot. It's hard for you guys to see it. There's a red dot bopping around here. It's it's identifying the hottest pixel all the time showing you where the hottest pixel is. It's right in here. That's a tube socket. This is the resistor here. So I put the white plus on it and read the temperature there. 67, 53. I'm sorry again, it's all out of focus and everything for you, but I'll go over on this side and see if I can read the same temperature. So this is the resistor. It's got the red mark on it this time. That means it's the hottest thing in view. So let me get the uh, get the white one on top. There we are, 83, 83, 84, and over here I can't remember what it was. It's about 15 to 20 degrees cooler. I want to believe this this test. Yeah. Maybe 10 degrees cooler. More current flowing in here. That's what I'm after. Comparing the current. The cool tube is here. So if the coolness is because there isn't enough current flowing through it, then this resistor would be a little bit cooler, which it is. And the other thing would be the bias voltage would be different uh, from a lack of current. The bias voltage, I think, is supposed to be 11 volts. Let's take a look here. So what is the bias voltage, or what's the drop across that resistor? Same question. From ground to the resistor. Well, that's almost 11 volts, isn't it? Ground first, please. So again, more current flowing in this, this one. Voltages, plate voltages. Everyone's asking, what are the plate voltages? Remember one plate, the cool tube plate was running a little high. This is the cool tube, cool tube plate voltage, not on the 20 volt scale. Cool tube plate voltage. Get just a little more visible. Three thirty-five. Now watch the rest of them. Plate. Three ten. Oh, three twenty-five. Three twenty. Three thirty-five. So, you know, that's 20 volts difference there. Not much difference there, though. This tube is the same as this tube in the circuit. So you compare these two better than comparing these two. So if I do that, again, I just did it. I'll do it again. 325, maybe this is no big deal. 335, 10 volts. I have a hard time explaining that right there also. I'm touching the grids on the output tubes. Here it is. It's coming from the left speaker here. Oh, I do that. 
She's a quiet. I have a hard time explaining this kind of stuff. How about we... I was going to say feed a regular signal through the whole thing and see what it's like. I, I know what it's going to be like. Oh, 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 voltage. Oh, oh, okay. Something I haven't checked yet today. Let's see if this adds to the picture. The problem is when I do this test with this meter, I'm going to inject a big hum. Mama, mama. <laughs> Anybody see that? Did that say 100 and something volts instead of 34? What's this say? That might be a good place to leave it. What was happening there? So I've noticed this before in this channel on this test. Weird noises coming out, pop, 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 just like that. Didn't sound quite the same, but the same sort of thing. And this side, just happy. This side used to have a big oscillation in it. That's all gone now because I altered the speakers. <laughs> Still hearing a hum, but the hum is only in one channel. Swapping tubes. Never mind all that other nonsense. Maybe, maybe there is a bad tube in here, even though I've tested the living daylights out of them. Okay, we'll swap the two input tubes because they're so cool I can do it right away. They're cool enough. Come on. It's getting hot in my hand here. Okay, that was crazy. <laughs> Tube swap, power on. Oh, peanuts, come on in. Come on in. Yeah, come on in. Okay, there's the hump. Hard to tell. Yeah, hang on here, buddy. Same. I'm in the same channel. Okay, so I'm going to move these. Let's turn it off. I'm going to let this cool off. I'm going to move these two over here and these two over here, and we'll see if the hum travels with them. It could be hum on top of hum on top of hum in this thing. Hum, hum, hum. Okay. Come on, Peanut, let's go play a bit. Is that a good idea? Peanut. Yeah, it is a good idea. Okay, so I've got the tubes swapped here. Let's power it up. The hum was in this channel. Where will it be this time? Okay, go full power here. speaker. It was a pop in the speaker and the hum disappeared. Well, I'll be. There's no hum in this amplifier now. <sighs> so many things, so little explanation. <laughs> Well, we're definitely on full power here. Um, let's poke the inputs and just see if we can hear anything. Yep. Yep. A little hum there. A little hum there. A little hum there when I put extra wire hanging off of it. A little bits of wire hanging off here with these temporary capacitor connections. Well, this guy's hum free. It appears to have output. Is it because of this capacitor? Wow, am I ever tempted to lift that now? I switched the tubes, the hum disappeared. Somebody, 
shoot me. Um, maybe I should swap them more. Maybe if I swap them right, money's going to fall out of the bottom of this thing. Who knows what might happen. So just to be clear, there's a slight hum in this, but it's at the point now where it's really of no consequence. Just from swapping the tubes. Hey, how about tube temperatures? Let me tip the amp right now. Do not like picking up things like this when they're operating. Even if you get one of those little nervy twitches in your hand that you think is uh it feels a little like a shock, I guess everybody gets them, don't you? Sometimes just occasionally you get a little zing in your because you've pinched a nerve or something like that. If you're holding one of these things up in the air and that happens, Ooh. oh, pop. The hum level is extremely low now. What about these crazy tube temperatures? So the cool tube is usually the one on the on the left here, this one, usually this one. It still seems a little cooler, doesn't it? But well, not not like it was. Oh, that was interesting. Something clicked and then there's a hum. Just watching to see if the temperature uh, changes here. So in this view, right now, I would say <laughs> it looks like in the pairs, the rightmost in the pair is hotter than the leftmost tube. What are you doing? Camera, don't, don't fade out on me now. Now, is that just an angular thing? What if I take a view from over here? You, you know me? Okay, knock everything down. Come on, camera, you can, you can do this. I know you can do this. I get the same impression. Again, uh, the, these two tubes are slightly hotter than these two, but we no longer have one tube significantly cooler than the rest. That has gone away. Whatever the heck that was, maybe it was just an artifact of my imagination being overpowered. Now, what about the hum that just popped in? Uh, speaker connections? One channel? These aren't the most perfectly made connections here. I could break the wires inside if I fiddle with it too much. Pull one out. Nothing. Put one in. Is this is this speaker even going? Okay, so I can get at the inputs here. Over here. Somewhere. So, I think what's happening, I'm just breaking the connection here and losing the speaker. I think that's all that's happening there. That channel, that channel. How would this hum show up from a pop? What would pop? What would pop like that? 
pop and then a hop. Before that, no hop. Uh, my temporary short circuit capacitors. Just doing so good here. I almost took a spill to the floor there. Um, why no hum? Now there's hum. Is there is, is the oscillation returned? Is, is that part of the picture here? Is that part of the picture? Don't think so. Let's see. Okay, oscillation on the plate. Nothing there, just a little hum. Oh, it's gone. Son of a gun. <sighs> it's beautiful now. Zero hum. Okay, maybe the speakers are disconnected. Let me just listen. No, it's definitely hot. Oh, I can hear this one too. What is it? Where's my stick? Oh, my stick. Best tool in my shop. Super tappy stick. Okay, first of all, these capacitors I put in, I just twisted them in. They seem pretty good. Okay, um, something funny happening with these wires. There's a tube clicking up here. There's a tube clicking. Thermal clicking. Quickly, my thermal thing. Here. Let's get it on again. Okay, I'm looking. I'm looking. They all look the same. So I'm sorry this can't be seen. Oh, come on, it's got to be visible here. Come on, make it visible. <laughs> I think I know what was happening. So I was seeing a hot spot right here. Right here. Reflection. I think I'm seeing reflected heat seeing the and then it would wrap around yeah it does so the surface here is shiny enough to reflect enough infrared radiation or whatever it is that's going into this viewer to show it up as if it's a hot spot another lesson learned but as for those tubes okay they they all appear to be the same temperature except for crying out loud this one now appears to be just slightly cooler but I don't know how, 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 how much that would really be. The hum has remained. I'm waiting for it to pop again. Pop, man. Jeepers creepers. Isn't this just... 
So I switched the tubes and the hum remained in the same channel. This one. So it's really the one channel. This might be slightly warmer. Oh boy. The hum is persistent. I was really hoping it would pop in and out. I could go after it somehow. And this whole aluminum chassis is getting pretty warm. Um. Did uh, did my capacitor give up? Oop. Did my capacitor give up up here? Maybe it popped off. No. What about these guys? No. Uh, what 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 else? It's a big resistor here. It's the kind of thing that would happen with a resistor, too, once it warmed up a lot. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That rotated, that rotated right on the lead there. Foo -foo with it. I don't like that one either. I don't think I'm going to nail this down uh, right now. Beautifully silent. Okay, only one channel. This is hard to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up putting a hum in with this meter when I, when I go to test it here. But let's, let's poke around anyway for what it's worth. Okay, hum coming. 200 volt scale. Let's take it down to the 20 volt scale. About a zero there. Not, not a zero there. Slight positive. So I don't know what these meetings really mean. That's the grid. I still have those gigantic seven uh, mega ohm resistors in there, acting like antennas, maybe. So I've capacitored it right to the ground through this capacitor. Put the smaller resistors in and see see if that finishes off the hum. Uh, another uh, thing we can do is we're going to look. Let's look at the top of this capacitor I put in with the scope and see what kind of hum signal there is there. It could just possible all the capacitors I put in are not the filter capacitors. None of them are necessary. That this hum is an artifact of something else. Okay, so we're going on the uh, right on the B plus. There was never any sign of anything going on here, but that that didn't even pop on my uh, scope. I should have kind of jumped, shouldn't it? Hey, Scopey, what are you doing? Go right off the screen or something. Is something going on with my scope now? No. <laughs> there's that little hum. <laughs> there, there's no DC there. There's no B plus. What am I doing here? Okay, checking for B plus on the B plus terminal where I put the filter capacitor just to be sure. Yeah, sure. 300 volts there. 300 volts there, absolutely no hum visible. Let's look again. You know, I've done this before and didn't see a hum for crying out loud. Maybe I didn't get the ground connected on the scope. Maybe that's what happened. Let's try it again. What are, what are we doing here? I'm totally lost now. We're looking at... Uh, huh, I forgot what I was doing. Hum on the uh, high voltage circuit here. 
there's just nothing there. I put this on DC and convince myself my scope is working. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. I'm gonna nip that capacitor right out of there, the one I the, the one I put in. The last one I put, I'm gonna nip it right now as we're listening. Right now. So that capacitor is not needed. That's for sure. I should have realized that. The hum the hum is only in one channel. It can't be from the supply. The hum could come from a heater in a tube. I've swapped the tubes, the hum has remained in the same channel. Well, the hum can come from some other leak between, for instance, heater, current, and wiring. But it popped. It popped in and popped out. Popped in, popped out. You know, that, that, that says a shorted heater on one of these tubes, and there's a good chance We'll let them cool off. We'll let them cool off. We'll give them the cool test. Peanut, I'm coming to play with you again. Okay, so I've given lots of time for the tubes to cool off. They're right down to room temperature. So here we go again. Put the power on. Will it hum? Basically interrupted this speaker. And man, that thumb was up here. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, the hum is transferred. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap back only two of the four tubes. I'm going to swap. Maybe they'll swap these two. We'll see if the hum travels. back up to this okay that's good we're getting down to it it's probably not hot enough that I can they're probably still cool enough so we'll do we'll do this outside one that would potentially be the humming tube Isn't that, oh I've forgotten which bleh. which channels which now the way to do this would be just to pull out all the tubes one at a time and see which one interrupts the hum, but it's also going to interrupt the uh, amplification to some degree anyway. We might end up doing that. Oh, 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 where's the tube? <laughs> Still hot. <laughs> I, I didn't want to hold on to it long enough to find out how hot. Now we got two hummy tubes. Yeah, it's not recommended to throw throw the tube across the shop. Like I said, I didn't want to hold on to it long enough to see if it would burn me. Two tubes swapped. Where's the hum now? Is it still here? Good, the hum is there. Is it here? Yes. Is it here? Nothing. Still here. I mean, it's this tube. So I will now pull out this tube and put in an alternate, an alternate tube, alternate tube. We may have identified the hummer. 
if, if, if this is really the case. If, if it's a two, I think I guess it has to be that one. Did I do my deduction correct? I'm gonna do my test. Ah, I can hear the hum already. Let's let it all warm up though. Let it all warm up. The hum has disappeared. Really? It's been a tube all this time. You know, there's been indications all the way along that the hum coming and going completely, if, if the hum can disappear completely, it, it, it certainly can't be coming from the power supply. There's no hum in here at all. Is it working? We will inject a signal. Sure. Sure. There it is. The hum gone. The oscillation gone. I can't believe it. I got there. I got there. Now, what about these tube temperatures? I'm going to, I'm going to put this right down flat. I'm not going to hold this in the air. I wonder if those original boosting capacitors aren't even needed. So what I see here are four tubes the same temperature, pretty much. I, I, I still see what looks like you know, a pair here are hotter than those slightly, but I'm just going to ignore that. Excellent. Excellent. Listen to that. That's excellent. Wow. <laughs> Okay, at this point, I award myself two thumbs up. I gotta do it now because maybe the hum's gonna come back in a few minutes. <laughs> Quick, turn it off while it's working. Fantastic. I think what I'm gonna do from here now, you can kinda hear the hum kinda wobbling around a little bit in there. I think what I'll do next is we're gonna go to town on the receiver. I think I'm gonna call this done. I'll leave the other two augmenting capacitors in there. I know they had some kind of effect may not even been enough to hear but nevertheless excellent i'm all excited fantastic thanks so much for watching uh, and it's on to the receiver <laughs>